Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk. And today I'm going to talk about A Beautiful Wedding by J.D. McGuire. This is the novella which is kind of like an epilogue to a beautiful disaster. Hey, I broke the reading curse, guys! I totally did! I was so excited. I have been in the biggest reading slump of my life. Can I just gush about how pretty this book is? Like, for real. Let's talk about the outside cover first is so pretty, and if you look closely, there's the little detailing. I'm a sucker for detailing in books. Like, you, ugh, that's my thing. Even in the writing of books, I'm a sucker for details, so she can win me over with some pretty descriptions. It's true. But then even on the inside, they have the butterflies, and over here they have it too. And I had a thing for butterflies when I was little, so butterflies are like, oh, special place in the heart. But anyway, I'm actually going to tell you a little bit about this in my non-spoiler section, and then I will, you know, talk about the details and stuff like that in the spoiler section. So those of you who have read that should stick around. But first off, non-spoilers. I would have just been overjoyed if this was just already in the first book. I think it would have just made the first book, A Beautiful Disaster, even better. It was so amazing, as is. It just holds that place in my heart. It's so good. I think it would have just been even more fantastic if it had this in the ending. But that being said, I'm really glad that she gave us this. Oh yeah, spoiler, if you haven't read A Beautiful Disaster, you shouldn't be watching this. I don't think I said that before because I'm about to spoil the ending, so go away if you haven't. But so when Abby's like, let's get married, and we're just like, where's the logic behind that? We get the logic, and I appreciate it so much. Because I think that is my only little nitpicky thing to say, but we didn't know why. We know why now! So we get a lot of justifications to why she chose to be like, Let's go to Vegas and get married right now. And it all makes sense. So yeah, this is, this really has almost no plot to it. So it's interesting in that way. I mean, I know a lot of novellas don't necessarily have a lot of plot and it's mostly just like what happened between this place and that place of a book. Cause this is like 2.5. So no, it's still going in chronological order. I don't know where I was going with that. Yeah, it goes through their wedding and we have Another little tidbit that I didn't think that we would get, I don't remember actually occurring, but I'm sure that it was either hinted at or had a place to fall in. So you get a little extra something. So it's not just this Vegas wedding, there's a couple other things that go on too, and I liked it actually. And another little thing I would like to say, I never noticed this, I mean if you follow my Instagram, which by the way is Hannah's stories with two S's, like H-A-N-N-A-S-S-T-O-R-I-E-S, -S -S but I found this and I was like, there wasn't a butterfly on the cover to this one. I never really noticed that until I found the butterfly to this one. I was like, hey, it does. It's here. It's right here on the Vegas sign. Can you see? Can you see? I know my camera's on on focusing mode right now, so you can't see, but you should look at your cover. And yeah, so that made me happy that that was in there too. So that was my little add in. So I'm going to talk about the spoilers in this book now. It's really, really fast. It was like 140 some odd pages. If you just sit and read it, you can do it in one sitting easy. I read it mostly this morning. So I will see you guys later for those of you who have not read it. And yeah, so come back when you have read it. Bye. Okay, the spoiler spoilers now. Let's let's enter those. So I already talked before how I really loved Abby's logic behind everything and her whole reason for, hey, let's get married is because of the fire. Because I think that was everyone's nitpick kind of, not, I don't want to say complaint, but it was kind of like that just a little, little bit more, like a paragraph more of the explaining, and that's exactly what this book is. So I've already kind of talked about that, but the fact that she's like, no one's gonna buy it, and it's enough for reasonable doubt, which is totally true. It's not saying, hey, this is absolute proof that we were there. No, you can fly on a plane. There were hours that, you know, there was this space of time. So it's not that, but see, Jamie was really smart about this. It created reasonable doubt smart stuff right there. My only little thing was the text messaging, I think, between Abby and Travis, just because it was very like saying you instead of Y-O-U, and I'm just like, can we spell, please? I mean, Trent didn't do that. He just did the at symbol, which is like the only deviation from actual English language props for. But I mean, people will text like that. That's just a personal thing, I think. It's the bookworm in me. Oh yeah, but I did have a point before I went off on that rant. Abby didn't actually tell Travis why she said, let's go get, go to Vegas and get married right now. She didn't tell him, and I didn't realize that until I began filming this, and that kind of makes me sad. It makes me sad a little bit. I don't think it was there. Did I miss it? Did, if I missed it, tell me. Like, please tell me if I missed that. But other than that, I mean, psh, this book was great. The fact that Travis felt guilty, it was so prominently a part of anything from his perspective in the beginning, especially that he felt this really overwhelming guilt and it made it feel so much more real. He honestly thought it was his fault and if you look at the facts, it partially is. 
But I really like Abby's justification in this, saying that it was ultimately their choice to go there knowing, like the people who died, it was their choice to go there and ultimately they wouldn't have been there if they didn't want to go there. But I see how you could spin it either way, honestly, but I really especially loved Abby's like reasoning behind all that. See, I was rooting for Abby. I mean, I know how this ends. I know they do end up getting married, but I was thinking he's going to find out beforehand and then there's going to be this big thing. And I was thinking that was going to be the conflict of the story. Cause I mean, you know, most books have conflicts and this, it did, but just not that kind of conflict. Right? Right. That makes sense. Sort of. Yes. Yeah. But the more I read, I was like, Abby, you gotta tell him. And then when she didn't, I, I kind of forgot about it until this, like I said. And I mean, it doesn't bother me, but I don't know the secret thing. I mean, it so seems like something Abby would do though. So as far as like character consistent, it fits her. I just felt though, as the story went on, like poor Trav, especially when she talked to Trent and then she like sank to the floor in the casino. Oh my God, which I loved. I'll talk about that in a second. I love me some emotional breakdowns because it, it makes everything feel so much more raw and real. Oh, I just love it. Trent told her how it would just break Travis's heart if he found out and it's true, but I still felt like he would. He just, he didn't find out. But I especially loved that part because Abby at times, and this was true, especially in Beautiful Disaster, being in her perspective the entire time, she felt not, cold is not the word, it's very calculated isn't the word either, like she just thought things through in a really methodical, t meth methodical, me and pronunciations, you guys know my struggles, but she thought things through like that and she wasn't all emotional all the time, she would kind of shut down in those certain kind of situations and stuff, but I really love that she had that just break, I loved it. Because that was the scene that Abby finally began to doubt getting married to Travis for the right reason. She would doubt it saying, this could, you know, break his heart if he finds out that that's her motivation. When Travis caught Abby crying though, in, by the slot machine, I was just like, oh, because of all of it, the things that were going through his head. And this is the part where I just so truly thought this sentence, this little paragraph is exactly Travis from Beautiful Disaster. Like, to a T and I just oh loved it. Why was she crying? Who was she crying to? Didn't she want to marry me? Should I confront her? Should I just wait it out and hope to God she doesn't call it off? Abby picked herself up from the floor struggling with her bags. Everything in me wanted to run and help her but I was afraid. I was fucking terrified that if I approached her in that moment she might tell me the truth and I was afraid to hear it. The selfish bastard in me took over and I let her walk away. It was so perfect. That oh, little, that's what I talked about when I said I'm a sucker for details. That little thing just sold me. It sold me. Let's talk about a couple funny bits for a second, shall we? So we kind of get like this, not flashback necessarily, but kind of like, hey, this is how the family works type thing. And it's so funny. And it's like this little break from the current situation to a different timeline type thing. I'm not explaining this very well, but you'll know what I mean when I tell you. So Travis is kind of explaining the dynamic between Shepley's dad and mother and then his dad mother and his family and then Shep's family. And so it's all of those details. And you have to remember that the Maddox family, Five unruly boys, okay? So, little side note. Sarcastically, our family was due for a girl, and I'm not sure the world could handle a female Maddox. All the fight and anger plus estrogen, everyone would die. One sentence, everyone would die. Love it. So you guys remember a couple years back when Tom Cruise was jumping all over Oprah's sofa? Well, reference. This was right after they were married. And Travis said, I'm just trying not to have a Tom Cruise moment. I now understand the whole jumping on the couch and punching the floor thing. I don't know how to express how I feel. Where's Oprah? I think this one funny bit takes the cake of all funny bits in this whole book. It was just fantastic. It was Travis's bachelor party um, for their like renewal of vows and everything, which I will talk about, but funny bit first. Um, gonna try to read it with a straight face. Embrace the straight face powers. Um, suddenly the lights turned on. The twins, Taylor and Tyler, threw confetti in my face. Music began to blare, and then I saw the worst thing I have ever seen in my life. Trent, <laughs> Trent in a man thong, covered in about 10 pounds of body glitter. He had a cheap yellow wig, and Cammie was laughing her head off, cheering him on. Great mental image there. Thanks. It was so funny. So now back to the Vegas wedding, when Travis slipped the worn envelope as soon as the words worn envelope showed up on the page set my book down <laughs> and i just started fanning my face like a southern woman and not and 
I just, I knew it was the thing from the mother because I looked up the quotes on Goodreads and I cheated. I cheated, but you know, I know how it was going to end. I figured it'd be okay. Okay. Um, and so I was just like, okay. I was bawling. I was bawling. Let's be real. I was bawling. So then at the renewal of vows, there's this game and I don't know. I just don't, didn't know about this game if it's a made up thing or if it's an actual thing. I don't know. But it's uh, what would your husband say? I think that's what it's called. And I loved that thing. I'm seriously going to adopt that. And just the whenever I get married thing, it's, I'm going to use it. I think that's so fun. And I thought it was just really a funny little thing to add because I know a lot of times okay, we get to the wedding, you don't really want to, you know, write through the entire process because it's kind of monotonous. And so it kind of just goes into fast forward mode a lot of the times. I'm not saying in this book, I'm saying like in every book in general, it kind of just goes into fast forward mode. And that was a nice little thing where I kind of expected it to go into fast forward mode. And then we had that cute little moment and we had a little bit of America in there. So yeah, it was like a nice little break and I thought that was a really fun part and I just really liked it. I wanted to definitely mention that. Okay, so you know how America's parents are kind of like Abby's step-in parents? pretty much. Mark was going to walk her down the aisle and he was practicing all week how Pam and I like are to give her away. And then when they actually walked down the aisle for the renewal of bells and he said her mother and I, and I just cried. I just cried. I didn't expect that. And it's a sweet little something that I really appreciated because a lot of the times I feel like things are just focused on, you know, like the two, you know, romance people. But you know, Jamie's really good at that at having us fall in love with her side characters. Like I fell in love with Shepley in America. Mostly Shepley, because he is awesome, okay? I love him to death. And I'm excited for the Maddox Brothers things because I have a pretty strong feeling that he's gonna be in all of those. So I'm excited. So be sure to check out all my previous videos over on the side and then all my social media is down there. And yeah, so I will see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk. I'm gonna try to get more book talks up, you guys. I've broken the curse. They will, there will be more. I'm gonna work on uh, Gabriel's Redemption. Convicted is one of my top priorities. And then I'm reading Duff, D-U-F-F. -F, I don't really know how you say that. Um, with like a couple of my friends and stuff like that. So hopefully I'll have a book up, a book, dip, 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 dip. So hopefully I'll have a book talk up soon. And I will see you guys later next time on Bookworms Talk. Bye.